I'm going to share with you a personal story today. It's about my journey over the past 37 years and an insight I got recently in a decision I took and how I will also share with you how it relates to your world, education. I feel that we as a society have created a pretty narrow definition of success. It's all driven by status. And actually, we as a society have defined stairs. And we know exactly which steps you have to take to get there, to get status. It already starts in school, when you have to pass your standardized tests in Dutch CITO. You have to do well in your CITO scores. Then you uh, go and get the highest form of secondary education. In uh, Holland, that's uh, VWO. And then you go to university, get a high university degree. Then you get to work for one of the corporates, one of the big names. And then you get up higher, higher in a management hierarchy until you reach the CEO position or you become president if you're in politics. So I've been climbing these stairs and um, I've really been reflecting, reflecting on them. And climbing these stairs have been a very humbling experience. I've encountered the most amazing things along this journey, like the ability to stand here uh, to talk to you at a TED. Um, but I also encountered an awful lot of frustration. And I want to share some of that with you. So first one starts with the CITO test. I want to share, take two little tests with you. The first one is a CITO test, um, a vocabulary test for five-year-olds. Let's see if you can pass these. So you have to indicate whether the word is blue, cold, or red, warm. And the word is iglo. So, tell me, what is it? Blue? Well, according to Cito, the right answer is blue, because it's cold. My cousin Casper, however, explained to his mother, well, you know, I filled in red, because uh, an Eskimo builds an iglo because it's really cold outside, but inside it's relatively warm. So, Cito, the, the result says that Casper doesn't know the word iglo. But he just thinks differently. Next one. See if you can pass this one. This is a one for a test for eight-year-olds. So, tell me, which one does not belong to this list? We have a car, a bus, a truck, and an airplane. Tell me. D, the airplane. Oh, a lot of discussion, good. Good students. <laughs> well, according to the test, the right answer is D, because it's the only one without wheels, right? Technically, well, it has wheels. Okay, 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 but. But um, the child of a friend of mine said, well, I chose C because that's the only mode of transport which was not intended to transport passengers. But what happens is that sh this child learned that his answer was wrong. You're wrong, you think wrong. Whereas I think that this type of thinking is exactly going to help us solve some of the world's biggest problems. We need extreme thinkers, we need different thinking, we have so many challenges. And if you tell you, you know, there's one way of thinking, you know, who's going to help solve the world and, and think differently? So um, I didn't have to worry about this that much because I was a really good student at school. So I did well, to, to do, got four A's on my report, went on. And because I was such a good student, I went to university. I studied uh, civil engineering at TU Delft. So I'm a master of science in civil engineering, ha <laughs> ha. And um, after that, I uh, joined, uh, I went to work for corporates. I chose uh, KPN and later Unilever. And uh, I, I chose Unilever because I wanted to learn marketing. I was technically trained, I wanted to learn marketing. But secretly, I also chose Unilever because I could really make a long nose to those who thought I was odd or a little bit different at school. I really felt I had such status working there. 
I also chose Unilever because it had a talent development program. Yes, that's how it's called, talent development program. And uh, because, hey, you have to climb up and up and up, um, I had to pass also uh, assessments to uh, understand where you are with your, uh, with your, your profile, your management profile. So, um, actually, as a perfect manager, to get up high, you have to score about 10 in every single uh, category. This is my profile. Um, a is passion and energy. I went way beyond all limits on passion and energy. And uh, what I was lacking, E, was uh, control, structure. And uh, this was a bit of a problem because um, I was acting like a puppy and jumping around and having lots of ideas. Ah. But uh, yeah, I was not too, uh, acting not too professional and, uh, and I really needed more structure. So what I had to do there, um, instead of that, that we were focusing on my talents and, and discussing how I could use my talents to make uh, had the product better and, and the team better and, and Unilever a better place and, and a better company, I had to cut down on what I was really good at. And I had to continuously work on my so-called development points, ontwikkelpunten. And um, the, this has a pretty disastrous effect on, on management. And, um, you know, people are being molded into average managers. And it becomes really predictable. We all know the managers in their gray suits and all driving the same BMWs and all learning the same things. And that's when you get the same results and the same outcome. It becomes so predictable. But we can't use predictability anymore. We need different things. So anyhow, I, uh, I decided to leave uh, Unilever and um, went on a new journey, uh, entrepreneurial career. Or career, I don't like the word career, by the way, but I became an entrepreneur. And a couple of years later, I founded um, I co-founded a company called Layer, L-A-Y-A-R. Um, with Layer, it is possible to put digital content on top of the physical world through the mobile phone. So you can, for example, put a three-dimensional object of how the world used to look like in the past and see it through your mobile phone. Or, for example, make school books interactive with digital content. So you can actually interact with a printed school book with videos and links to websites. I had a talk about this two months ago at TEDx Binnenhof about my dream that uh, interactive print could really help education. And there have been a lot of reactions, so a lot of educational institutions are using Layer right now to make the schools better. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Um, Layer got an enormous amount of success. Um, and the app has now been downloaded on 25 million phones in 209 countries across the globe. And we got a lot of awards. And I, I personally also got many awards. I've been elected as a young global leader by the World Economic Forum. I'm a young advisor to uh, your commissioner, Nelly Cruz. I'm, I was uh, frequently listed as one of the most influential women in technology. It's all really humbling titles. But uh, the coolest thing was that I got access to the highest of the highest in leadership. I uh, got to attend the World Economic Forum in Davos. And this is the yearly gathering in January of the world's CEOs and, uh, and presidents and other big leaders. Um, I uh, was there in January 2011, and the world was on fire. The, the revolution in Egypt had just started, and, and I was so impressed that everybody was a CEO, but I also expected that, that, that a lot would happen. I really remember this one meeting where, with 150 CEOs of, of my industry, and, and I thought that we would be discussing how can we help and what can we do to make it better, and, but nothing happened. Nothing. And that was a really big disappointment. And on two layers, of course, because I wanted I expected that, but also because I started to realize that all my life I've been looking up and up and up and up to find true leadership. And yeah, cause that's where you have to go. But I learned instead that it's not out there. It's right here and here. The answer is value. 
It's all about value. And I find value now in, in people around me. I found value in a, in a fellow young global leader who's digging trenches in the sub-Saharan desert to make the area green again. And I found value in the lady who wouldn't take no for an answer and is now building a new school for 50 uh, hopeless kids. And I find value even in my own hairdresser who really disappointed her parents because she didn't want to go uh, study law or, or and become a doctor. But she really found her path in being a really good hairdresser and, and making people beautiful from the outside and the inside, inspiring people. And what do these people have in common? Well, they want to make the world a better place for themselves, for their direct surroundings, yeah, their, their families or their companies, for all of society or for the planet. They, they have found what they are really good at. They found what they really like doing. And they are actually using themselves as an instrument to make things better, all with their heart and all with their passion. And it is my dream that everybody can find their own value and use their value to make things better. And this is a pretty big thing, right? This is uh, not uh, something that can easily be solved. It's actually one of the biggest problems of our times. Um, and because so much repair work has to be done already with people in their 30s and 40s and, and coaching, etc., I don't want to go there. Um, but I want to start with children. I want to make sure that, that children are learning at a very early age, very young age, in early stage, how they can learn to find their own value in life. And uh, it has been said a couple of times already, if education is your only way out, it better make sense. I want to help shape an education ecosystem which is no longer driven by achieving status, but by creating value. And um, I just, I have to do this. I, it's, it's everywhere around me. I can't hide it anymore. I need to do this. I really found my calling, my, my purpose. And yesterday, I announced to my team at Layer that I will be spending <laughs> my, the rest of my time, the majority of my time, on this calling. And um, sorry, <laughs> emotional. But uh, what am I going to do? I don't know yet. I, uh, I've given myself half a year to uh, to explore first, and to uh, I want to share. I want to hear from all of you. I mean, so many things that have already been been figured out, right? And uh, so many ideas are all out there. So please feed me uh, and share with me your ideas. And um, I'm sure that we will find a big solution in in technology. And it's my, my area. I mean, technology can help shape, and, and of course, so we can have more room for the real human factor, because that's the most important thing. So, um, and I'm sure that I will found, may I co found a new institute or an academy or a new platform, new technology startup, whatever. But um, I first want to find out what I want to do really. And I want to join forces. Uh, I want to help make things better and bring things to a high level. I think that is my value. And that's pretty scary for me to say, because I've never really uh, had the opportunity to be just my value. I've always been able to hang myself up on some kind of status. But here I am, just me. 